In this session, I am going to talk about the multidimensional scaling, which is uh, another procedure of dimension reduction. Just like uh, a few other techniques that we have discussed earlier, whether it is uh, principal component analysis or exploratory factor analysis. So, just like these things, even the multidimensional scaling is primarily targeted towards reducing the dimension structure of the data. But each of these techniques does this reduction in a different manner. So, here we are looking at uh, what are the various ways in which I can implement the multidimensional scaling. One, if I have a metric data, which is a quantitative kind of a data, it could be in an interval form or in a ratio kind of a form. So, what are the procedures? What is the R mechanism that I can uh, implement to run this multidimensional scaling and how do I interpret the output of this multidimensional scaling? Then I would be moving towards understanding or explaining the non-metric multidimensional scaling, especially if my data is more to do with non-quantitative in nature, more of a ranking or ordinal kind of a data. What is the procedure that I can very well use for uh, running multidimensional scaling and interpreting it? So, these are the two major aspects that we are looking in this session. So, what I would uh, really uh, like to do is try out the same data set that we have used for principal component analysis as well as uh, exploratory factor analysis, the brand rating related data. And on the top of it, I want to see how I can use the multidimensional scale. So, as we have already uh, talked about the conceptual side of it, it is primarily used for reducing the dimensions of the data. But the way it does it is different. It goes with the distances between the variables. Whereas your principal component analysis was doing a transformations of your variables in such a way that the correlation between the variables is zero. They become orthogonal. That is the major purpose of the principal component analysis. Whereas if you look at the explanatory factor analysis, we had some latent variables which we have uh, given some kind of uh, relationship with respect to manifest variables. So, some kind of relationship between the latent variables and the manifest variables, uh, though it is not perfect, but still to whatever the best possible extent that could be uh, created. And that way we are uh, reducing the dimensions of the manifest variables and using these latent variables as the proxies to the manifest variables for the further analysis. Whereas here, it is purely based on the distances. So, the closer the distances are, we talk about the similarities between the variables. So, that is what is the aspect that the multidimensional scaling procedure brings into practice. So, we will uh, go ahead with the data. Let us try to see how we can implement the multidimensional scaling in the data. So, this is the brand related data that we have used earlier. Right? If I want to look at the DIM, which just shows me that there are 1000 rows and 10 columns. I want to look at quickly the head of this brand to see what it contains. So, 9 variables and the 10th one is the name of the brand ABCD up to J. Now, I would better uh, do a scaling for the first 9. This is where I am treating these ratings as numericals. So, I would be uh, going ahead under the assumption of uh, metric data itself because these ratings I am assuming that they are quantitative variables not categorical kind of rankings. So, this is where I am doing brand. I am using this brand or probably let me call it as brand. Yeah, let me take it as brand itself. Brand 1 to 9. I would do a scaling of them. So, I will say scale. Again, I will call brand 1 to 9. So, the existing 1 to 9, I am doing a scaling 
and again reassigning to those values itself. Now, but uh, again here I have to go with all rows, only 1 to 9 columns. Even here also I have to go with all rows, 1 to 9 columns. So now if I look at the head of brand, it would be a scaled values. So I have these kind of scaled values across. I want to compute the distances between the points before applying the MDS. So how do I find the distances? Let me call a variable called brandist. Or now let me compute the mean first. Let's do it based on the mean. Instead of doing it on the raw data, I want to do a multidimensional scaling on the aggregated data. So that's where I'll call it as brand mean. And the way I compute the brand mean is I have an aggregate wherein I'll take all the variables. So I will use a dot tilde brand. So I'll do a dot tilde brand, which is simply a saying that uh, all the other variables I am trying to aggregate across the brand where the data I am taking it as brand and uh, I am trying to compute the mean. So I get a brand mean. So quickly looking at what is the brand mean for this data. So this is how the brand mean is coming out A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. These are the means that are associated with each of the brands. Now, this is where I am talking of the distance. I really want to look at what is the distance between each of the variables. So, I can calculate the Euclidean distances. If it is a quantitative data, I can calculate the Euclidean distance using the dist function. So, that's where I am using a variable brand dist to just compute the distances. I am simply saying dist of branding. I am simply taking the dist. Okay, NAs are introduced by coercion. So, let me see. When I am looking at brand dist, So this is how the brand is typically computed. So this is how I am seeing the brand distance. And I can very well uh, look at this is how the brand distances between each of these brands are computed. Now the MDS, the multidimensional scaling solution simply comes out as using CMD scale. I want to use CMD scale as an input, as a function and the input that I have to give to it is a distance matrix. So what I can uh, simply uh, look at is brand multidimensional scale MDS. I'll simply call it as CMD scale which is a multidimensional scale. I'll brand disk as the input. So I got my brand MDS. So let me see what my brand MDS gives me. So it gives me two dimensions. Alright. So A. So when I am looking at uh, the variables 1 to 10. Which are nothing but my ABCs. Right. These are my variables ABCDs. And uh, the, this is the second component. So basically there are two factors. So it's an x y uh, x y dimension kind of stuff. So you can look at it as a x dimension, and this is a y dimension. Two dimensional kind of result is what it has given. So for each of the brands, right? So probably let me uh, set the row means. The row means of these I can very well set as brand mean dollar brand. So let me set row means of brand MDS, I will set that to brand mean dollar brand column. 
right so that i can have a clear understanding okay brand why is it not happening brand mean oh brand mds is is not uh, what is the class of brand mds it's a matrix Romines of brand MDS. Oh, sorry, not Romines, row names. That's where the mistake was. Let me call not the Romines. Let me take it as row names. Row names of brand MDS. Let me set it to this. So based on this, now I can see my brand MDS is A B C D to J. This is the x dimension. This is the y dimension. So I can simply take the plot, right? I'll take the plot where I'm taking brand MDS as the input to see what comes. So this is how the plot is typically coming. So different variables are looking on different stuff. Now this is where I could typically uh, go with. I can take a text here, right? Uh, I want to uh, plot the stuff, so I'll take the text. wherein i am looking at i am taking a text where i am looking at uh, brand mds right this is what i am trying to set the row names i'll directly take the row names of brand mds for each of the points so if i look at the text part so there these are the text that are getting set i think uh, the symbols are overwriting the text so let me redo the stuff right for the plotting it's better that i remove the points right so that the text can be written better so that's where i can say type equal to n so that the points can be removed first so this is the plot and now i can add the text quite comfortably so that it is clear so i get different elements out here right a and j are quite closer to each other two brands b and c are quite closer D and H are quite closer. E is somewhere here. F and G are also more or less quite closer. So when I'm saying type equal to n, I'm not plotting any kind of symbols. So within that, I'm actually uh, putting my text, and this is where I'm typically adding that text to my graph. So I could clearly see here. i'm getting an x y x and y dimensions indicating a two dimensional estimated plot coordinates for the entity so i could clearly see which of them are together which of them are farther this is more or less a similar kind of an understanding i have got when we have used the a perceptual map also in the principal component analysis so the plot function will directly give the visualization of the mds output and it can help me to understand which of these brands are pretty much closest to each other and which of them are pretty much farthest away from each other so this is the kind of an analysis that we try to do when we are working with uh, metric data so which can help us to understand right so if i am simply saying brand mds it says this is how it has broken down the whole stuff when i am saying summary of brand mds it directly gives me for each of the variables what is the minimum what is the maximum kind of stuff and i take the correlation of brand mds i get it 1001 so even in this case this is also working in such a way and you take the structure of brand mds you can also get 
So you are simply uh, getting the numeric values, this and this. That's the only output that is being produced by the brand MDS, uh, uh, which is the uh, MDS uh, function, which is your CMD scale. Now, if my data contains non-metrics, till now, we have worked with the data that is purely metrics in nature. Now I, want, I have a data which is non-metric where I am looking at rankings related which is the ordinal data kind of stuff or any kind of categorical variable. Now I can't use the same method of computing the distances which is the Euclidean method. right? I cannot first of all uh, uh, scale the variables in the same way I have scaled the uh, quantitative variables. So I cannot scale them in the same way. I cannot use the same mechanism that I have used to compute the distance. So uh, there is nothing called metrics distances here. So I cannot compute the distance in the same way. Even the MDS algorithm that I have used, CMD scale algorithm. So that also I cannot use if my data is more categorical or uh, more and more ranking oriented uh, in the values. So, just to understand the same concept, so let me uh, first take the same data, right, convert it into ranks, right, the same data. So, I can uh, uh, typically do an order wherein I will get the rank. So, let me call the same as brand rank, right, without disturbing too much. So, I will uh, first uh, uh, take L apply function. So, because I am taking L apply, it becomes a list. And towards the end, probably I can even convert it. So, on this brand mean, so this brand mean data, I am trying to compute a function. I will take a function of x, wherein I am simply saying ordered so, I will take the rank of x and then order it. That is it. I will take the rank of x and I simply say order it. So, this is my L apply part. Right? I can take a L apply on the top of it. And uh, so, which means uh, for the brand mean, so all the variables of the brand mean, I am simply applying a ranking on the top of them. And this I can convert it into a data frame. So I have simply done the ranking and I have converted all of them into a data frame. So based on that, if I look at my brand rank, so this is how I am going to get. In each one of them, I am going to get on a 1 to 10 kind of a scale. What are their ranks? So, this is an example of ordinal data, the ranking based data, right? And uh, on this, I cannot use the same function that I have used earlier. So, when I am working with the ranking, I am more and more going with uh, a non metric MDS, but when I am uh, using more and more metrics data, I am using a metric based MDS. Now, this is where I cannot rely on the distance wise, I can't use the dist function here. I have to use for this kind of data, I will be using the daisy function from the cluster package. So, let me load my cluster package and from this package, I will be using the daisy function. So, daisy function is typically used for finding the distances between distances between uh, the various uh, ranks. So, uh, I cannot use the original function. I will be using the daisy function for that particular purpose. And here, I can use the Gover metric. That is what is the metric that we are using for computing the distance. And it can handle the mixed numeric ordinal nominal data. So, I will set the metric as Gover here. So, let me take. So, in this case, if I am taking the brand distance, I cannot use 
I will not use uh, the dist function. I'll use the daisy function, which I would do it on brand rank. And the metric, as I said, I would be using the Gower metric. I'm using the Gower metric. So this will give me the brand dist. Brand dist, which is computed here, is slightly different. Right, this would not work in the same way as the Euclidean distance. So I am using the Gower metric here to compute the brand distances for each of the brand. So based on that, once my distances are computed, just as uh, a CMD scale was used to do a multidimensional scaling, here I would use ISO MDS. So I would be uh, using the ISO MDS uh, uh, function and I would give the input as the brand distance itself. So let me uh, give the brand MDS now. I'll give it as ISO MDS and again I would give brand distance as the input. Let me see why it is not taking because it's present as a part of the mass function itself. Brand dist. Okay, let me load the library mass. Now let me see the brand MDS. Okay, so I had to load the library mass. So based on that, I am using the brand MDS uh, is ISO MDS of the brand distance. So there are some kind of iteration that it has performed and finally it has got converged, right? So now I could typically uh, see what the brand MDS is coming in this way. Again, there is 1 to 10 and uh, these things. So two dimensions, X and Y, similar to the earlier case but now when I look at row names right now if I look at the row names of brand MDS I would uh, I would typically uh, go with the original solution which was brand dollar brand uh, sorry brand mean dollar brand so now if I look at brand MDS still I am getting I think uh, yes ABCs were not there even in the brand mean okay brand mean dollar brand I could use that so brand mean dollar brand if I use it row names brand MDS is brand mean dollar brand so okay brand name a brand MDS now brand MDS is actually giving points as well so let me set dollar points so for that if I set it row names brand mds dollar points i'm setting it to brand mean dollar brand yeah because here we have uh, two things dollar points is there dollar stress is there so i'm setting the row name only to the points so this is where now if i look at brand mds again i'll get my names as abcd 
So wherever I want to use uh, any plot, this time I can't use it as brand MDS. I want to do the plotting using brand MDS dollar points, right? So this is uh, important here. I'll do a brand MDS dollar points and the type I set it to N so that uh, the points are not plotted. And based on that, I can very well go with the text, just like the way we have used earlier. Brand MDS dollar points. And to this, I will uh, use the text, which is the row names of brand MDS dollar points. So this is what is the analysis that if I had converted them into quantitative variable into ranking variables, this is what is the kind of a graph that I have got. So all of them are looking slightly uh, different from each other. The interpretation is slightly uh, different if the data is more and more of an ordinal or a ranking kind of a data, whereas if it is more and more of a quantitative data, a metric MDS, I'm getting a different kind of interpretation altogether. So there are some kind of differences in the way the graphs are plotted in both the cases. So we have to be really clear whether the data is more and more of uh, categorical in nature or quantitative in nature. Based on that, we have to use our interpretations accordingly. So just to quickly summarize, PCA is more and more informative especially when I'm talking of metric data. When you are working with metric data compared to a multidimensional scaling, I prefer going with a principal component analysis itself. Both will address with a perceptual map. Both will address more or less the, the similar reduction in the uh, reduction in the dimension space. Whereas if I have too much of non-metric data like my uh, categorical or uh, ranking kind of a data, PCA has not much of a benefit in this case. So in that case, I would better go with the multidimensional scaling itself. As we have seen now, we will uh, use ISO MDS uh, procedure, right? Instead of uh, CMD scale, if it is uh, 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 a categorical or ranking based uh, multidimensional scaling, uh, we would not use the distance function we would use a DICE function from the cluster package. So two major differences we will go with. But the solution that we get, we can plot the stuff based on that we can make a very good understanding of which, uh, which brands are pretty much clustered kind of stuff. So this is the same fundamental that is very much used when you are handling the text data, especially when you are taking the customer's feedback in a, a kind of a textual form comments, reviews, where I would typically look at the frequency of a particular text occurring, I'll convert them into distance scores. The frequencies, I will convert them into distance scores and based on that I can really identify which set of words are being used more and more frequently and etc. So I can do a co-occurrence matrix of counts and that's one more area where uh, this particular uh, multidimensional scaling really helped me in making my conclusions more and more effectively, right? So these are the few things that I wanted to look at as a part of this session. So if you have any further queries, you can very well get in touch with me by giving me a call on the number that I have given below. Or you can send in an email at bombseizer at the rate of facegurus.com. Thanks a lot for listening to this uh, session. Thank you very much.